It's September, so everyone knows that means children are back at school. What many may not know is that at the start of the month, the law on sex education in schools in England changed. Schools now have to deliver relationships education for primary age children and relationships and sex education for secondary students. And this applies to all schools, whether they are state funded or fee paying. There are good things that can be taught under the new arrangements, but at a time when there is growing alarm at the sexualisation of children, the changes also provide an opportunity for campaign groups opposed to Christian teaching to push forward their controversial agendas in schools. The law and government guidance gives opportunities for Christian parents to engage constructively with schools, both to protect their own children and to encourage schools to adopt a positive approach which will benefit all. To help parents navigate this minefield, the Christian Institute has produced Relationships and Sex Education, a guide for Christian parents in England. And I'm very pleased to say that with me now to talk about these changes and how parents can respond is our education officer and the author of this new publication, John Denning. Welcome, John. So things are changing, change quite a lot, in fact, in terms of school teaching on relationships and sex education. Tell us, what do these new laws require? Yeah, so these, these new laws came in beginning of, of this month, September, um, for all schools in England, and they require them to teach relationships education, if they're a primary school, for all their children aged five and above, relationships and sex education for secondary schools, state-funded schools will have to teach health education, and a primary school, in addition to all that, can still choose to teach sex education if they want to. So, so one way or another, all schools in England, state-funded, fee-paying, everybody's affected, primary, secondary, to, to one degree or another, there's differences, but every school is affected. Absolutely, in that's right. The, the government's tried to to impose basically the same regime consistently across all schools in England. Now, there was talk about this being uh, postponed for a year uh, because of the COVID situation. So what happened there? Yeah, well, the, these new laws were passed by Parliament before anyone had heard of coronavirus. So those laws have just come into force anyway. Start of this month. The start of this month, and schools are required to abide by them now. But of course, that never really meant that schools had to be teaching these lessons on the first day back after the summer holidays. Mm -hmm. So what the Department for Education has done is it's written to schools and said, well, um, if you haven't had time to get ready properly for the teaching of these subjects, you can take your time to do that, but you must start teaching by the beginning of the summer term um, 2021, this summer term coming um, at the very latest. So, so it could be happening now, or it could be coming in essentially at any point more or less between now and let's say the back end of May, whenever the term That's comes. right. It's going, to, it's going to vary from school to okay. school. And, and is that delay helpful? Well, it's certainly helpful to schools, I think. Uh, I mean, obviously schools have had other things to think about over the, over the past few months. Um, and one of, the, one of the requirements under the law for schools is that they must consult parents before they even write their policy on this, let alone starting teaching on it. Um, so this delay gives schools that haven't yet consulted parents the time to do that properly and make sure that parents are happy with the approach that they're, they're going to use. Yeah. Now, John, you're getting an awful lot of calls from Christian parents and grandparents and guardians, and a lot of them are concerned about this issue. Now, are they right to feel that way? Is there something uh, for them to be concerned about? Yeah, I would, I would say it's really important for Christian parents to be alert to what is going on in their children's school and, and to be concerned, yes, and to be, be ready to take some action on it. I mean, in actual fact, if you read the government guidance, there are some really good points in there, right. as well as some bad points. It's not all bad news. Okay. Um, there are definitely some concerning things in there. But this, there's been a long, long debate for years over what this guidance should say. It's now written, it's now finalised, that debate is over. And it's now over to schools to decide how to implement this in their school. And it's over to parents as well to hold schools to those good points in the guidance. And what would, it, what would um, can you give us a flavour of what some of those good points are? Yeah, so, so schools are required to teach about the importance of marriage 
its importance for the upbringing of children. They are told in the guidance they should teach about the importance of truthfulness, um, loyalty. Um, there's, there's actually a whole long list of, of really good things. So Christian um, parents will be pleased with that sort of thing. Yeah, so there's, so there's good things in there, but of course some schools might choose to play that down or want to play that down. Um, but it's there in the guidance. Yeah. When schools consult, parents can say, well, actually the guidance says this. How, how are you going to teach this? When are you going to teach this? How are you going to approach this? And really encourage schools to, to, to make the most of those good points. Uh, and there's some concerning things, yeah, obviously, in there as well. Um, I mean, we understand that we marriage now is, is defined as, as including uh, marriage of same-sex couples as well. So how, how is the school going to approach that? Uh, schools do have a duty to have a balanced approach to controversial issues, to not just indoctrinate and just push one viewpoint. But schools need to be aware and to know about the range of views that do exist amongst the families their children are coming from so that they can do that. They need to understand a Christian view in order to provide, provide education that's suitable for children from Christian homes. There's been suggestions, hasn't there, that um, there's, there's campaign groups, perhaps um, individual teachers with agendas who are more keen to push particular elements. Is that, is that something to be wary of? Yeah, uh, yeah, and that's, that's, the, that's the biggest problem. The biggest problem is not the government guidance. There's concerning elements, but it's not the biggest problem. The biggest problem is these other groups that have their own particular agenda and they want that to be pushed in the schools through the teaching of relationships and sex education. They're coming along offering staff training, offering lesson plans, offering um, teaching materials to schools, uh, and there needs to be uh, other people who are pushing schools in the other direction. Because of course, I mean, teachers, we all know teachers are exceptionally busy. And I suppose there's an element of if someone comes along and offers you some things which appear to make your life easier, um, you're likely to take them. And, and of course, lots of teachers uh, will have lost any kind of Christian connection um, and um, perhaps won't see some of the issues as we would see them. Would that be? Yeah, I, I think that's fair. Yeah. So, so you have the problem, yes, amongst teachers, of in, some individual teachers, a small minority, who have, have their own agenda they want to pursue in their teaching. Um, but that's not the biggest problem. The, the biggest problem is you've got a lot of teachers growing up, uh, they've grown up in our culture, they, they, they don't understand a Christian view, they don't, they've never necessarily thought about these issues in any depth. Uh, and as you say, schools and teachers are busy, they've got loads to do, they haven't necessarily got the time to put into reading every last detail of government guidance. An organisation comes along and says, here's a load of materials, um, you know, you can get, we can let you have them, uh, not too expensive, just buy them and that will tick off all the boxes, you'll fulfil the requirements, you'll keep Ofsted happy and, and they'll just go for that. And, and, and they need then for Christian parents to stand up and say, well, actually, no, that's not all right. So if I'm a, a Christian parent uh, or grandparent uh, watching this, uh, the thing I'm going to want to know is what can I do about all this? Yeah, well, the number one thing, obviously, is to be alert for a consultation if that's not yet happened. And, and sometimes schools send out little text messages on a Friday afternoon, um, which has a link in it to some website. You look at that website, it's got a link to somewhere else, and eventually you get a newsletter and somewhere buried in it there might be a sentence that says something about parental consultation. Right. So it's probably not what you want to do when you get back in from, from work on a Friday, but check that, follow the links, read it, make sure you're not missing Because that's a legal requirement, isn't that? Yeah, the point they, you're making schools must have to. Yeah. Yeah. I think actually it's a bit questionable if schools just put it as one sentence in, in a newsletter, but um, that could happen. So be alert for that. Um, and in the consultation, get involved, respond. Um, and obviously the best thing to do is to respond in an informed way, which is why we've produced this, this booklet um, to try to try to help uh, parents understand exactly what's required. Um, it's got some tips in for how to approach schools, how to raise issues. Uh, it explains some of the different views that are shaping or could shape a school's approach to the teaching of these subjects. Um, so, so yeah, we hope that that'll be helpful for, for Christian parents to have a read of uh, and to use, um, refer to during school's consultation. Without wanting to embarrass you, you, you wrote this and it's an excellent uh, piece of work and people are already talking about how useful 
um, they're finding it, which is which is well, great good. to hear. Um, well, let's say um, the parent has a parent has responded to the consultation. They've said what it was they want the school to do. Does the school have to do it? Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, um, schools serve lots of parents, and and they can't please everybody all the time. They can't just do what every parent wants. But there are certain requirements, again, legal requirements of schools, that the education they provide must be age appropriate and that it must be appropriate to the religious background of pupils. So that means they need to understand that religious background. They need to understand the relevance of that religious background for the teaching of these subjects. So that means the consultation is a really key opportunity for schools to understand that. That's one of the things they must be doing. So it's a great opportunity for parents to say, this is where we're coming from. Yeah. And, and given the context of needing to present this in, a, in a, a, a way that is appropriate to religious background, this is our religious background. So parents can steer the schools almost in terms. Absolutely. I mean, it's not very often, is it nowadays, that Christians feel they're, they are officially being asked for a Christian view on relationships and sex education. And, uh, but, but that is effectively what, what the consultation is doing. I mean, I'm sure that most schools will consult parents. Yes. Um, but what happens if there is a school that's going ahead with this teaching and hasn't, in fact, consulted parents? Yeah, well, well in that case, the school is breaching its legal obligations. Right. Right? It's, it's not obeying the law. That's very clear. Uh, th that's clear. black and white, yeah. So if that has happened and parents write to the school and point that out, I think the school will then consult. Um, but parents are very welcome to contact us at the Christian Institute in that sort of situation uh, and we can help uh, in, in that situation to make sure that consultation happens. Okay, so let's imagine uh, the kids have gone back, uh, the, uh, they're being taught this new material, parents have been consulted, but there are some parents who just aren't happy with what's going on. Is there anything that they can do? Well, they can certainly hold the school to the law because what, what, whatever the result of the consultation, the school has to still obey the law. So that does mean it still must teach about marriage. It still must um, provide the education in a way that's age appropriate and appropriate to the religious background of pupils. So it shouldn't be contradicting the parents' religious beliefs. It, it could present other views for critical consideration, but it shouldn't be pushing a view that contradicts parents' views. Um, so if the school isn't obeying the law in what it's teaching, again, that's something that, that parents can raise and the school really will be forced to comply with the law. Again, we can help if necessary. Um, I mean, I, I'm aware of a number of situations where when parents have raised is issues, the school has changed its approach because it's realised that actually it wasn't in line with what the law requires. I, I mean, in one case, um, a whole local authority withdrew a scheme because it's Warwickshire. It was, yeah, Warwickshire, when we pointed out that it wasn't complying with, with what the law required. So parents really can make a difference. People really can make a difference. Um, but it does sometimes take people to stand up uh, and raise the issue and point things out before schools will, will in every case, do what they're meant to do. Um, and people might often feel like they're on their own, but from what you're saying, you're saying they're very much not on their own. They're not, the, they're not unique in the sense of the concerns that they're feeling and the concerns that they're thinking about raising, you're dealing with those concerns yeah. on a sort of a day-to-day -day, um, basis. So people shouldn't, shouldn't be worried that, uh, um, about approaching you, about approaching the Institute. Um, you, most of the situations you will have seen before and you can... You can yeah, that, that, that's right. So we're here to help if, if parents need that. And I would just encourage parents, you know, you are the parent, they're your children, um, you've got that responsibility. And it's not just about your own children, it's also about the children, uh, other children. You, you can have, we, we can all have as Christians, a, a, a positive impact on what schools do in this area. We've, we've been given that opportunity and we really need to take that. Um, a, a, and yes, the, we're always there um, if, if, if parents need, need some advice and, and support and help with that. But a good school is going to want to take on board the views of parents yeah, and, and the right. concerns of parents. That's right. So, so don't just assume that a school is going to be hostile to what you're saying. Um, any, every teacher knows that education is a partnership between the school and, and the parents. And, um, you know, schools will, will, any good school is going to want to hear um, and take seriously concerns that, that parents may have. So crucial question uh, and last one. Ultimately, 
And perhaps as a last resort, can parents withdraw their children from this teaching? The answer to that is a little complicated. Uh, the answer is yes to some parts, no to some other parts, and, and sort of there's a, a grey area in the middle for, for other bits. Um, so I won't try to explain all the detail of that now, but, it, but it's in the booklet and expl it explains that. I mean, as I said, last resort, I, I would say, first thing to think about is how can you influence things for good rather than just opting out of it. Sure. But, but that's, yes, yeah, certainly there's a long, been a long standing right um, for parents to withdraw their child from sex education. That's a really important backstop protection. But, but have a look in the booklet because th there's, some, there's some nuance and detail to, to that. So if I had to try and sum up, John, uh, I think you're saying this is a complex area, um, but people shouldn't feel um, that they're on their own uh, and they shouldn't feel um, that there's nothing that they can do because if I have concerns about the situation with my children in my school, I, not only is there something I can do, I have an opportunity through the consultation process and even after the consultation process to have a positive influence on the school um, and change the weighting of this teaching um, towards more Christian things. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, John, thanks ever so much for, for your time. It's, I think you've made very plain what can be a difficult area for most people to understand. Uh, and as you say, if um, people should get hold of the Relationships and Sex Education, a guide for Christian parents in England booklet, um, this excellent resource, and that will help them with some of their questions. And also they can feel free to get in touch with the Christian Institute uh, and uh, perhaps speak to you and get some tailored uh, assistance um, where they need that. Yeah, that's right. Thanks, John. Well, I hope you found that useful. If you want to get a hold of your copy of Relationships and Sex Education, a guide for Christian parents in England, then contact the Christian Institute on info at christian.org.uk. Thanks for watching.